You know, when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time looking at this, the Mead catalog, early 1980s. A lot of stuff in here I wanted, but the telescopes that really fascinated me were the research grade Newtonians, eight inch, 10 inch, and 12 and a half inch. Now, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, so I was mainly just window shopping. I never dreamed I would own one of these things. They were based on cave Astrola parts, and I think if you were to poll collectors today, I think most of them would probably tell you that the caves are slightly more desirable as collector's items. But for me, no, it was all about the meads. They changed things just enough, and the way they packaged them and the way they looked, I think these just look more beautiful. And again, those of you who have followed me will know that I think these are some of the most beautiful telescopes ever made. Now, I have one of the 8-inch models. It had been restored a few years ago by Scope Wizard. And of the three models, the one that I see the most often by far is the 12 and a half. In fact, I see enough of those. I see one of those pop up every few years. It doesn't really surprise me when I see one of those coming up on the marketplace. After the 12 and a half, the 8s are probably next. I don't see them as often, but they do come up from time to time. I've never seen a 10-inch model. And in fact, I've never even heard of anybody who has the 10-inch model until a couple of weeks ago. Sadly, a club member passed away at a nearby astronomy club, and this one was offered to us. And I looked at this, and when I saw the condition of this thing, I just wasn't interested. But the more I looked at it, I realized what we have here is a 10-inch Mead research-grade Newtonian. The mount, of course, is not in very good shape, but the optical tube looks like it's been stored indoors, and it looks like that might be okay. Now, when talking to Scope Wizard, he thinks that this might make a good restoration project, so I told the owner, I'm interested. So this is the 8, and you don't see me talking about this one a lot on this channel because, well, you can kind of see why. The thing is just freaking huge. 150 pounds total, and 110 of that is in the mount. That means the optical tube weighs somewhere around 40 pounds. Now, if you want a comparison as to just how heavy that is, an entire X-T8 Dobsonian reflector, that's the telescope you're constantly seeing me recommend on this channel, that whole telescope only weighs 46 pounds with the mount. So you're talking about 40 pounds just for the optical tube here. That's quite a lot. Now, looking at the pictures of the 10, Scope Wizard and I were in here measuring things. We do have some concerns because it appears to be completely corroded over. And one thing in particular is this counterweight down there is held in by a tiny little set screw. That mount looks like it's been left outside for a long time. I'm already counting that thing out. It would be great to get the counterweight off the shaft, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to do that. Barring getting the counterweight off the shaft, the next step is going to be to separate the mount from the pedestal using these three bolts here. And again, looking at the pictures, we may or may not be able to do that, but it would, in fact, free up some of the weight because we, won't, we don't have to carry the pedestal and the legs by themselves. If that doesn't work, we're going to have to try to get one of the three feet off. And the way these are attached is there are bolts going into the pedestal and there are wing nuts on the other side. Its pedestal is open at the bottom. That thing's been sitting outside for I don't know how long. Those may be rusted over as well. If nothing else works, we may have to lift the entire mount into the car. And we've measured things, and it will actually fit into the back of John's Outback just barely. Now, this mount weighs 110 pounds. The 10-inch mount weighs 140 pounds. And the 10-inch optical tube weighs 55 pounds. And again, for comparison, an entire X-T10 daub weighs about as much as the optical tube for the 10. These are reasons why you tend not to see equatorially mounted large reflectors these days. Most large reflectors today are daubs. Another comparison, the 55-pound optical tube for a 10-inch Newtonian is more than the weight of an entire C14 optical tube, which weighs less than 50 pounds. But one of the reasons for the weight is that they use these beautiful rotating rings here. You can see how high the eyepiece is, and you can bring this down. This is a feature I really wish people would bring back. But again, this adds weight to the optical tube. I don't know how to reconcile that. Okay, so at this point, 
you know what I know. I don't know anything more about this other than those photos that I've shown you. We're getting ready to head down in the morning. It's about a two hour drive each way. So let's see what happens. Well, those, these might come out. Yeah, those, but I hope so. If not, we gotta loosen it off here and get this off. Yeah, that makes sense. What do you think about the set screws That's for the counterweight here, John? Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> well, just, uh, not just that, it's this right here. That, yeah, yeah, there's two of them you gotta I get out. I have to cut that off. Um, Though what you might be able to do, see if you take the saddle Did you just off, rotate that? Maybe the, yeah. Maybe the okay. shop will go right out. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. That's what happened on a cave mount. I had this come off, take that off. Once it's spent... I thought months. I saw the feet bolted to something underneath, but they're just leveling screws, which of course don't do anything when they're sunk into the soft ground. Getting the counterweights off seemed hopeless, so we removed the entire mount head instead. Oh, was it pretty heavy? Three of us lifted the 100 pound mount off the pedestal. The mount doesn't look very good, does it? Well, Scope Wizard says most of the damage is cosmetic and it can be fixed or restored. Luckily, the optical tube is in much better shape. It was stored indoors and looks remarkably good considering its age. Okay, so that didn't go nearly as badly as I expected. We thought we were gonna be there for a long time, but the one thing is we gave up very quickly on this idea of removing the counterweight from its shaft. It was so corroded, we weren't going to do that. And Scope Wizard actually brought a blowtorch with him in case he had to torch the counterweight shaft to try to entice the counterweights to come off, but he wasn't gonna do that. As you can see, we did manage to get the entire mount head off the pedestal, and that's the way it sits in its in Scope Wizard shop right now. Now, that entire mount head weighs about 100 pounds, so getting those counterweights off the shaft is still a big priority. You know, that thing weighs about 100 pounds, and I think something like half of that is the counterweights itself. So getting those things off really makes working on the mount itself a lot easier. We did plug the clock drive into the wall, pressed our ears against the housing, and we heard what appeared to be a well-functioning clock drive. Wasn't making any strange noises, no rhythmic, no pulses. It seems to be very good, and that's actually quite impressive considering the age of this telescope. Now, one of the things we got in the package was an original manual, typewritten manual of the Research Grade series. This one is dated 1979. I've never seen one of these things. And if that date is accurate, that means this telescope is something like 45 years old. Not too bad. So on the optical tube here, again, the mount is sitting in Scope Wizard shop, but I took this thing back here so I could work on it. And getting this, I'll tell you, getting this thing in here, the weight and the bulk and the size was not fun. <laughs> On the outside of this thing, there were these brown, yellowish splotches of things, and some of them were sticky. I don't even want to know what that is, but they've started to come off with some light uh, glass cleaner and some sponge action. I'm going very lightly on this to try not to mar the finish itself. This Mead nameplate is a curiosity. If this telescope is from the late 1970s, they didn't actually start applying that nameplate to their scopes until the mid-1980s to the early 1990s. That may have been applied after the fact. If we have any experts in this field, please let us know in the comments below. These rotating rings are a little bit stiff, but you can adjust the action here. Again, I'm going very slowly, adjusting the tension here, and it's coming loose a little bit. I'm going to take that piece at a time and see if I can get that action to free up. The finder here, it's got some issues. <laughs> the objective lens, I don't know what's going on there. Is the lens cracked? Is there a spider web in there? I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna open that up and take a look. The 965 inch eyepiece is missing. No eyepiece in the finder. And not only that, there is a helical focuser here that turns back and forth, but it is missing the pin that actually moves the helical focuser in and out. So you can focus the focuser, but it doesn't actually move anything. That's got to get looked at also. So I took the mirror out 
And I've, I told people I was going to take the mirror out because I wanted to clean it, but my ulterior motive is I just wanted to make that thing lighter so I could carry it around. Mirror in the cell weigh about 15 pounds, and as you can see here, I, I don't even know what that stuff is on there. I assume that is debris from nature of some kind. It appeared to be stuck on there. And when I get a mirror that's in that kind of condition, my normal procedure is to just take the whole thing and soak it in the sink underwater with some dishwashing liquid in it for some time to see if some of this surface stuff will loosen, which it did. Repeat that a couple of times and rinse it. And then for cleaning the mirror, I use a product called ROR. I think it's called Residual Oil Remover. Let that sit on there for some time. And then using a piece of lens cloth, I will very carefully start to move things out from the center out and not using much more than the weight of the cloth itself. After several iterations of that, I was able to get the mirror to this condition here. It's not too bad. It actually could use a little bit more, but I think I'm going to stop there because doing any more is going to involve some more touching of the mirror, and I don't know if I really want to go after that. So if you see the mirror cell here, I've got it out, and from where you're standing, this probably looks pretty good, and it does look pretty good for the age, but however, it's not actually that great. If you shine a flashlight through the back of the mirror, you'll actually see the light comes straight through the front. So the coatings have deteriorated. We can't really fault the mirror for that. If it's been 40 to 45 years, of course the coatings are going to deteriorate. And in fact, if you look to the front of the mirror in the light, you can actually see right through to the mirror cell behind it. All right, so on to the mount. This is the eight inch and this is the 10 inch, but they all used the same mount. The research grade mounts were all the same for the eight, the 10 and the 12 and a half. The only difference with the 12 and a half is that the pier was slightly higher to accommodate the length of the tube. This is a grand old tradition in telescopes and one that I'm not sure I'm especially fond of. They will use the same mount for several different models of telescopes, higher and higher to, of course, to get you to buy it. Now, the ones I've seen mainly are the 12 and a half, and I can tell you the 12 and a half is not stable on this mount. The eight, however, is very stable on the mount. I'm very curious after all this is done, how stable the 10 is going to be on this mount. These mounting centers are about 17 and a half inches, two bolts here, the eight will come right off and I can put the 10 on this mount right now. Okay, so now we have swapped positions on the optical tube. The eight is now sitting on the floor and we have the 10 here. By the way, I was gonna show the process of me swapping out the optical tubes, but trust me, you didn't wanna see that. This is not an ideal situation because the radius blocks for the top of the mount are calculated for an eight inch optical tube instead of the 10, so it's not actually sitting perfectly on there. Also, the mirror is still missing from this. I did this on purpose because the weight of the 10 inch optical tube without the mirror is approximately the same as the eight inch with the mirror installed, so I didn't have to add any counterweights. Also, I do want to point out here, I do get a lot of email these days about people looking to get into a bigger scope because they have aperture fever. I just want to point this out to you. I'm not telling you what to buy, but that's a six inch. That's the blue telescope there, a six inch F5, the eight inch F6, and you can see what happens to the size and bulk of the telescope when you get to a 10 inch. Now, of course, these days, you don't see a lot of equatorially mounted large Newtonians. They're mainly daubs, but you get the general idea of what happens when you get aperture fever. I don't know. What do you think? You know, throughout this whole process, Scope Wizard and I were just worried that we would find one item that would kind of derail this whole project. But we didn't really find that. And instead, what we found were lots of little things that had to be taken care of along the way. And I hope it stays that way. Scope Wizard thinks this restoration is a process that's going to take about one year. Now, that may sound like a lot of time, but I've seen this before. When you start a project like this, inevitably you run into something you didn't expect. It's going to take a lot more time than you expect. So, check in with us from time to time. We'll tell you how this is going. Win or lose, good or bad, you'll see it. What do you think? What are the odds that this is going to turn into this? Thanks for watching.